Hey, guess what? It's Monday night. Time for voiceover body shop. Yay! All right. You showed up again. We don't know why, but you keep doing it. But Might be the guest. It could be because we have a great guest tonight, Dan O'Day, who is a radio legend. Indeed. Uh, mostly dealing in commercials and, and how radio stations do their stuff as opposed to really being on the air. I mean, mm -hmm. he was a jock, but we'll talk about that. And that's. Mm -hmm. But he also has some courses for voice actors, and nice. we're going to talk about that. Yeah. And in tech, we have some stuff. We've got questions. Microphones. We've got some microphones. We have an audio interface, courtesy of Jack Daniel, who brought yeah. in his Apollo Arrow. We yeah. See that. All right. And a lot more fun stuff. And your questions. So stay tuned. VoiceOver Body Shop coming right up. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars. A Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. A voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording. And a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, makers of Source Connect, Source Connect Pro, and Source Connect Now, VO2GoGo.com, Everything you need to become a successful voice artist. Voice Over Extra, your daily resource for VO success. The VO Dojo, take your voiceover career all the way. J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And by VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website shouldn't be a pain in the butt. And now, Live from their super-secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver... Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Yippee! Oh, yes indeed. We return once again. Still got one more shit. By the way... Did you realize this is our seventh anniversary of doing this show? Like this is the date? This is the one? It, March 22nd. But so it's the, the champagne's 19th. champagne's cooling right now. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, something like that. There's, I think there's some, you know, some uh, angry champagne. orchard out in the fridge or something. But uh, awesome. Yeah, seven years we have been coming, doing this but... show. Jeez, man, by hook or by crook. Yeah, really? As I was saying earlier, the internet seems to try to kill us. And yet we are still here. And we here still we come back every, every week. Yeah, but tonight... Flawless. Yes. From here on out. From it will from, be. From this point forward, it will be Well absolutely. then Matt walks in. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all that's well, all. Now, now it's all gonna just <laughs> fall off the cliff here. <laughs> but anyway, uh we've got uh, Dan O'Day with us tonight yeah. and we've got some questions from uh our our wonderful audience out there who uh continues to challenge us. We have some gear we're gonna look at, but right now it's time for Voice Over Body Shop presents the VOBS Voice Over Extra News. All the information you need for a successful voiceover career. For March 19th, <laughs> Voice Over Extra News, a happy jaw. Tonight we bring you a real jaw dropper, literally. We all have trouble with articulation now and then, now and then like then, when reading a script, but for some it's a constant battle and Here's why you might have trouble. Speech specialist. Da -da. See? Same thing. Speech specialist Dr. Ann Hooterbeck says your jaw might not be happy. In an article now on VoiceOver Extra, Ann notes the difference between what she calls British English yes. and American English. Yes. With British English, you, know, if you talk with your jaw clenched. Uh, there's less openness of the jaw. But for American English, it's important to have an open jaw, especially for the sound in words like at and came. Here's where we might have problems, though. 
Stress and anger can cause us to clench our teeth. And this clenching results in altered articulation. Clenching or grinding your teeth can also lead to temporomandibular disorder. And one result of that is pain or difficulty in opening your mouth widely. See a doctor if you suspect this to be happening. Mm. And says simple exercises can help bring you back to a happy jaw. For one, watch yourself in the mirror as you open your mouth. Aim for an opening that allows you to insert your middle and index fingers on top of each other with the edges touching. So that's enough. Okay. Another exercise is to do gentle circular motions with your lower jaw. Ah, hmm. Well, see, now you've got a happy jaw. This helpful article and many hundreds more await you at voiceoverextra.com, your daily resource for voiceover success. Indeed. Yes, indeed. And uh, next week we have Dr. Rena Gupta with us. Oh, great. Who is a rhinootolaryngologist, an ear, nose, and throat doctor, and she will talk about our, 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 the mechanics of our voice. Whenever we've had people that the, the ENTs on, yeah. we always have a lot of people watching because there's a lot of questions. That's one to be here for live. Absolutely. For sure. And it'll be a fun one to have. Um, so. You got some gadgets. We, we have some gadgets. We're going to talk about also, whose studio are we? We're in Jorge Infante's studio in Portugal. Woo! That is fancy. Isn't that something? That is Boy, fancy. We're, we're going to find out this is actually his studio. <laughs> this is the picture he sent us. So Jorge, you better verify that one. <laughs> so what's up in tech this week? Um, we've got a couple of pieces of gear in the studio tonight to show off in the flesh, as it were. Yes. And, uh, Dan, you got a few mics sent to you by SE Electronics. Yes, I did. Um, what did they send you? Well, Looks they, like a, and it's a, an SE Electronics X1A. The X1A. Yeah. yeah. And the A is the new version of the X1. Yes. Now you can probably unmute this mic so we can hear what it actually sounds like. Let's see what channel it's on. All right. It's, uh, it's the guest mic. One guest mic. Okay. All right. So. Lock that up. All righty. One, two, three, four. There it is. No, it's the one next to us. There you go. Spare mic. Spare mic. There it is. All right. This is the X1A. Right now I've got to put that buzz on. I want to see if the thing will hide itself or not. Watch. Test one, two. There's Sam. One, two. So right now it's sort of a buzz more of a buzz than anything else. Well, it's a great microphone when it works. Uh, <laughs> there we go. All right, now it's working. I think we have a bad something or other. All right, watch. This was the... Yeah, I think I think that mic cable might be a little bit worse for the wear. Well, that's... I'm getting a buzz off of it. Really? Okay. Yeah. Do you want to just patch it into this one? We could do that. Let's, do that. Let's try that. that. All right, how's that? That better? Pop that up. Okay, all right. That's better. All right, this is the SE Electronics X1A. So now, this one needs a little bit more gain. It does mean, a, it, that is one thing about it. It does need a fair amount of gain. Just put that in there like that. There no, you that's go. not good. Yeah, okay, we'll just put it there like that. Perfect. All right. Okay, and the, the what's great about this, Mike, is one, the price point on it is under $200. It's, yeah, that's it's affordable. Yeah. It's a very affordable mic, but it also has, it has a, uh, an 80 Hertz rumble filter on it. Uh huh. Yeah. And it's got a 20 dB pad. Yeah. And it's got a nice cardioid pattern to it. The output on it, it, what? Oh, for crying out oh. loud. <laughs> Hold on. That's back. Okay. Now it's back. Okay. All right. No, see, it was 30 seconds ago when we unplugged the microphone. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of a delay out there, but anyway. <laughs> The, the SEX1A, it, it doesn't have the output that some of the, the other mics do. Yeah. Uh, but for that price point, as you can hear, it's a really good sounding mic. It's pretty clean. You know, I mean, that could be a, a deal, ideal mic for travel use. Yeah. I mean, you don't want a mic that's overly sensitive to everything. Right. It could be good for that, and especially at that price. Right. And so, it, it, yeah, and we know that SE makes really great stuff. Mm -hmm. It's got a great, it's got a great capsule in it, and it, it's everything you need, and it's not $10,000. Yeah, it's an affordable price point. Could be a good starter mic to plug into your Scarlett Solo or whatever. Yes. So what else you got? Well, this is the other one. Here, let me just see. This is the great thing about this. We're going to mute that. We're going to mute that. All right. One, one, two, three, four. Okay. Let me check the pads. Okay. Everything should be set right on this it's thing. It's on minus 10. There. Oh, there we go. Where is it? 
No, no it should it be wasn't. centered. Should be you centered. know what it is? Hmm. This mic has something called a soft phantom power ramp up or something like that. All so right. Well, now it's working you, fine. When you patch it in, it ramps Ooh. the power up slowly to keep you from getting this loud pop when you plug it in. Right. It's a great microphone. That's a feature. Right. Not a bug. Yeah. Now, this, this is very similar and is to be competitive with the AKG 414. It or is. 214. It kind of emulates that design and shape of a 414 a little bit. A little that bit. Kind of flat bodied. Right. But it's, yeah, but it's got a lot of different patterns on it. It's got a lot of bells and whistles. It does. <laughs> Not necessarily that you would need all of those for voiceover. Yeah. Now, recording a concerto, maybe. Or interview from side to side or something along those yeah, it lines. It has figure eight. It has right. omni. Right. It has two different flavors of cardioid, a cardioid right. and hypercardioid. Right. It's a great mic. Yeah. You know, and uh, But it's also more expensive. I think it's about... About uh, four forty nine, four ninety nine, something okay. like that. So it's in the Caddy one hundred S price range. It kind is, of. but has more features than the U one hundred S. Yeah, it's a little bit more flexible. It's a yeah. dual capsule mic, which gives you all those patterns. Right. Those patterns could be useful in a in a small studio where you've got glass behind the mic and you, or glass on the side. By switching it to figure eight, sometimes the mic will pick up less reflections off the glass, and that can work in your favor. Right. But, okay. Let's go back to the Harlan Hogan VO. Be working just fine now. It's ramping itself up. There we go. There we go. Okay. So, SE Electronics does make some great stuff. I've been reviewing that. They also make the Reflexion filter, which can help you out in some tight situations. Which yeah, is the Reflexion's cool. good, and, and when you're trying to take a room that's a little bit too lively and making it a little less lively, it's not a just fix-all. You can't just put one up in your bedroom and have an instant studio. Right. Let's, you know, be clear about that. But it is a pretty good piece of kit. So um, we also have, courtesy of our good friend over here, our gain drop down. I'm bringing the gain. All back right, up. all right. There we go. Right. Um, courtesy of Jack Daniel. This is his own personal piece of gear he brought in for us to see. It's we get a close new. up with it on this cam this here. Is, yeah, let's go to the Brio. Yeah, our new Logitech Brio camera. It's our close up camera. Don't worry about it. It'll Beach come back. Beach ball. Well, that would make sense, actually. <laughs> we may or may not be on the air right now. <laughs> Dan O'Day, you came, for, you came in for a good one tonight, Dan. Still beach balling? Okay. So do you think this camera is working or no? All right. And there it is. Yay! <laughs> this is the... Uh, Universal Audio Apollo Arrow. This is we've talked about this unit, but it's the first time we've actually had one in our hot little hands. And uh, it is basically a I wouldn't call it entry level device because it's five hundred bucks and right. it's got a lot of stuff going in on in under the hood. Right. But it's a little less expensive than their prior one, the Apollo Twin Solo. It's also an easier name to say, Apollo right. Arrow. And um, it's a Thunderbolt three device. So you got to have a pretty recent Mac to use it. I understand there are some Windows PCs coming out with Thunderbolt 3 as well. And cool. so my understanding is it is cross-compatible for Mac and for Windows if you have the right interface. Does it still work the same way, say, the Twin does with uh, plugins and stuff? It does. It, it supports all the same plugin architecture that the Twin does. So if you want to insert, like, you know, the front-end processing that we always say you're not supposed to do... But if you know better and you know how to use these tools, it can be an advantage. Um, you can insert plugins, plugins like a mic preamp, a certain particular preamp, like an API Vision channel strip, which is an emulation of a vintage mixing board. Right. You can also insert like the Manly Vox Box, which is a four or five thousand dollar preamp, something like that normally. But if you buy the plugin, it's about a three hundred dollar plugin. And as we found out from the people at Universal Audio. It's hard to tell the difference. It is really hard to tell the difference. We were at uh, NAMM Nam, back yeah. in January. We got to demo the electronic or the virtual plugins versus the real pieces of gear that they're emulating. <laughs> it was uh, very hard to tell. Yeah, really Extremely was. hard to tell. Um, this one's also different from the Apollo in that it's bus powered. So what that means, it only requires power from the, the USB or the Thunderbolt 3 jack. Right. 
I say USB because it looks like a USB C jack. Don't get them confused. It looks not. like it, but it's Thunderbolt 3. Um, anyway, I think $499, roughly something, something around there. Two microphone inputs and two line outputs. The Apollo Twin has additional outputs that you would use to send audio to, I don't know, a Zephyr or a phone patch, some other external hardware gear that right. some of you may use. But for the majority of you who don't use outside of the box gear, you're doing everything in the computer, this really might be all that you need. This, a great mic, a Mac or Windows with Thunderbolt 3, and you're off to the races. So cool. anyway, nice little piece of gear, Absolutely. nice size. I'm hoping they make a mono one one day that's half the size. <laughs> Holding on to see if that comes out, but thanks for bringing it in, Jack. Yeah. All right. Well, All I right. was going to do a DAW view tonight, but we're we, since we've spent a little time on that, we'll we've just spent go a lot of time. We'll just go to the question that here. we had tonight. Let's do it from uh, our, our. Let's see here. The question comes from. So we skip a break and go right to no, the we'll, end. No, no, no. We'll go to the break actually. Okay. So we're that's going to take good. a break right now, and we'll go to that question. That was a tease, ladies. And I gentlemen. know. Be right back. once again for another episode of voice over body shop vobs is still on seriously this is john bailey the epic voice and you're watching vobs.tv monday nights at 6 p.m pacific 9 30 newfoundland man there's one show that i can't miss it's called vobs and a lot of people are like, V-O-B-S? What is that? That is BS about V-O. And I love V-O. How much BS is going to be in this show? There's only one way to find out, baby. Hey, guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants. And you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the Audio Body Shop. Meow. <laughs> Snails like it, too. Before time began, there was V-O-B-S dot TV. Watch. Or else. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> Learn the latest in voiceover technology, business, and good old fashioned acting. I really like your bracelet. It's awesome. Hey, Paul, where did you get that watch? Um, that's really cool. And a hamburger with no cheese, please. Every Monday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, only on voiceoverbodyshop.com. Hey, is 2018 going to be the year you take your voiceover practice to the next level? Well, if not, you can go back to checking your email or anything else that's going on while this message is airing. And I think there's also some leftover pizza in the back of the fridge. But if you're serious about dramatically upping your level of success, I want you to go to a very, very special URL. VO, the number two, gogo.com forward slash VOBS. That's VO2gogo.com forward slash VOBS. Join the hundreds of VO practitioners around the world who've decided to do something positive, invest in themselves for this new year. Learn voiceover from the ground up or from where you are right now to where you want to be. Go to VO2gogo.com forward slash V-O-B-S. And let's make 2018 your year. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle yeah, getting know. someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no oh, control. Yeah. And it takes forever yeah, to get yeah. one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. Yeah. Yeah. We believe in right. creating we'll fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, so. highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time right. you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. and uh, Dan O'Day waiting patiently by. We'll get to him in just a couple of minutes. Uh, but I want to do something and show and explain something for everybody. 
uh, that is always asked of us because people don't necessarily understand what is, what a waveform is. So I'm going to use our screen here and we're going to show it to you. All right. Okay. Well, okay. So we need, there it is right here. Look at this. People are always asking, what is a waveform? Well, there's a number of components to it. So let's look at it here. There's the waveform. Now, if you look in the center there, there's what's called the nominal line level. That's where there is no volume. Remember, you're not looking at this thing up and down so that the top is loud and the bottom is soft. The top is so hard, loud and the bottom is loud. So make sure that you understand that you're actually looking down at it and it's going from side to side. And that's really what's going on when you're looking at your digital audio uh, software. You're looking at a waveform and it's loud on top, loud on the bottom, and in the middle where it says nominal line, there's nothing. Okay? Then we have some other stuff. We have to, we have sort of, like, for instance, there's dynamic range. Now, dynamic range is how we modulate our voice, and that's how loud it is. And the louder you are, the bigger the waveform is going to be. So you want to maintain this dynamic range. We like to say peak between minus six and minus four. Some people say, well, maybe more like minus 10. We say between minus six and minus four, and we're right. Anyway, uh, that's, that's, that's what the modulation is. So we measured this in with a, uh, something called the DB scale. But anyway, if you get too loud, if you get too loud, what happens is you go into the distortion region, which is near, I think, um, um, Lompoc, uh, up north of here. And, but the distortion region is where the audio starts to break up. And we want to make sure that you don't get that loud. But there's a way to make sure that you are loud enough and that the engineer at the other end that's getting your audio isn't going to get ticked off at you. And that's something we call, well, first there's the peak level or the clipping point when things start to really break up. Yeah. But there's this thing called headroom. Now, headroom is this area between where it's modulating okay and below the distortion region. And as long as you're keeping the audio in that, that zone, it should be fine. But your waveform should be nice and healthy and thick. Yeah, having a little bit of headroom is helpful, right? Just it is. Because it gives you that little cushion you need. Digital is not forgiving. That's Once right. Once you hit distortion region, it's done. Right. Okay, and let's look at this. This is, this is, give us an, uh, if you're, say, you're using twisted wave, uh, go to that shot there. If you look really carefully, you can see the nominal line running through the middle of that. It's, you know, it's that line. There it is, right there. Uh, and when you look at the audio and the audio is not on that line. I mean, I could zoom in even tighter on this and you could see that, uh, it's, um, what it is, is it's, it's a crossover point is what we like to call it. Come on now. It's there. There it is. It's a crossover point when you can find a spot where the audio is crossing that line, there's no volume. And that's where, that's a good place to edit at or edit to and get silence out of it. So in case you were wondering, that's what a waveform is. All right. All right. So what's next on the agenda? I think we have a question and you can, you can end that shot, Susan. Uh, it's, uh, just the two of us now. There we go. Uh, the question comes from, uh, no, down, 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 no, the other way, other way, other way. There it is. Okay. There we go. Uh, Paula Faye Lineweber. Paula Faye Lineweber. Yeah. All right. Uh, still looking at different mic options on the recommendations of my engineer. Thanks, George. And another mic was suggested by a local dealer. So I thought I would ask for your thoughts on it. That's the Shure SM7D dynamic mic. 7B. Which, 7B, sorry. Yeah. Yes, very different mic. I don't even think there is a 7D. 7D, there is. Um, Mike with the Cloudlifter CL1 mic activator. What are your opinions? I'm waiting to possibly get a couple to compare, but so far only have a Sennheiser MKE 600 coming. Thanks for any thoughts you can supply. What's she using to start with? Yeah, I guess, <laughs> you know, context is helpful. I mean, uh, Paul assumes that, of course, I can 
that I'm remembering which right off the top of your head where mics she's already using and what context she's already using them in. Right. I I, I if you hear a dynamic mic being thrown around in my world, it's because <laughs> you're working in a really tough Noisy. environment yeah. and you're trying to get away with working in a noisy environment. That's when you use a low sensitivity mic like a SM7 or right. something. Right, but what does she lose by that? You lose some clarity, huh? Bluebird. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Thank you for checking the chat uh, chat room, Jack. Yes, that's right. She's using a Bluebird. The Bluebird is a fantastically sensitive, great, amount, amazing studio mic. Right. But if I remember now, her studio environment is less than perfect. Right. There is a relatively elevated sound noise floor from her environment. Um, I plug th- the fridge. I think she is in a shared living environment, right. which is really challenging. She is one of like five tenants right. in one house. So that is one of the That's hardest of noise. things. That is one of the hardest environments to deal with because unless they're all going to play along and play nice. <laughs> and Good like, luck with that one. Okay, no problem. Go ahead and record now. Unless they're going to be willing to play along and actually be quiet, it's not going to probably work out. So um, I do believe now I had mentioned a couple options to her. I mentioned a dynamic mic. I also mentioned a headset microphone. She does audiobooks. Right. And so my thought of using a headset mic is a headset mic is because it's so close to the mouth, you can put one about one to two inches away from your mouth. You can run the gain a lot, lot lower. With a lot lower gain means the mic is less sensitive. It means it hears less background noise. Right. That was my theory about using a headset mic. We've bantered, around, at least I've bantered around the idea of using headset mics from time to time. I've tested some out, and they're definitely usable. If you're comparing the noise floor between, let's say, the Bluebird she has or any good large diaphragm mic and a headset mic, the headset mic is always going to have a higher amount of hiss. Absolutely. Those micro capsules are not capable of creating a super quiet recording. They will have some hiss. Right. That's that's the trade-off, even at the $7,800 price range. But again, audiobook, mic is very close. You're going to do a lot of post-processing on it to, you know, to get to master it. You can deal with a little bit of that hiss in post. So, you know, try out the SM7, see what you think. But... It's going to be one of those things you got to test it and see in your environment if it's going to work. Yeah, yeah. But an SM7B, fabulous mic if you're on the radio. Yeah. That's but we're a, not on the radio. We're voice you, actors. You put it right up to your lips and you talk. You know, that's what that mic is designed for. Right. Whereas a studio mic like, like the Blueberg, the VO1A, those are designed to be used at some distance. You right. know, And they, they sound better at a distance. Yeah. The further away the mic is, the more gain you need. The more gain you have, the more background noise. Get the mic closer, yeah. maybe you can get away yeah. with your environment. Yeah, but an SM7B with a cloud lift. Cloud lifter is a great little thing for a ribbon mic, and it can help in certain situations, but using that to gain up an, an SM7B, and somebody suggested that was, saw Hawaiian vacation written on her forehead. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the CL1 is, is a very popular device. A lot of people use it with an SM7. I find that sometimes it really helps, and sometimes it doesn't. Don't take anything by rote. You have to demo whatever it is you're going to get. You have to use it in your environment and try it and see if it works for your needs. And send you or I the audio so we can determine if it's working. I because have a feeling remember, I'll be hearing this audio. <laughs> yes. You don't hire you. Yeah. Listen to right. the guys that actually know it. So if they want to get a hold of you and listen to and have you listen to their audio and fix it all and all the stuff you do, yeah. where do they go? GeorgeTheTech.com. You can go to my services menu. You can get a sound check. You have some audio processing done. I can help you with your audiobook mastering. Design a studio. It's all right there. Right there below me. And Dan, you wrote over there. At right here at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Mm-hmm. Boy, talk about technology. Yeah, I've got the uh, the specimen collection cup there. Just click on that. It is a Dropbox. And let me listen to your audio. Don't That's process right. it. I want to hear your clean studio. That's right. It's like, I'm going to put all this compression in it. No, stop it. Yeah. All righty. Anyway, Dan O'Day is waiting patiently by. Yes, he is. And he will be joining us in just a couple of minutes here, and uh, we'll talk about some stuff from radio and some other things, too. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. 
The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success. In one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly... We still have Dan on here's mic. Okay. All right, we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. I think you have to talk about source elements, don't you? Oh, I do. I have to do their commercial because they would they would leave us if I don't do our no, com do their gotta commercial. Got to talk about source elements. <laughs> source elements is a fantastic uh, software. Well, they make a lot of different softwares, but they make Source Connect. Don't need it. I improvise. Uh, they make Source Connect and so many other softwares for voice actors. The ones that you're probably most interested in as a voice actor are going to be Source Connect Standard or Source Connect Now. What is the difference? A quick demystification. Source Connect Now is a completely free system for sending your audio between studios real time or between you and a client who wants to monitor you in a method that's cleaner and better sounding than Skype or a phone patch. It sounds amazing, again, and it's totally free. Source Connect Standard, on the other hand, is not free. You can buy it on a monthly installment plan or you can buy it outright for people that just want to buy it once and not have to buy it again. And that software is a total replacement for technologies like ISDN. It allows very high quality, very reliable connections to the other studio. If you want to give either one of them, either one a try, you can go to source-elements.com. You can get a 15 day free trial right over there and give it a shot. Let us know what you think and let them know we sent you. We'd really appreciate it. All right. Dan's coming up here in just a minute with Dan right after this. Old-fashioned actor. Hey, Paul. I really like your suit. Where did you get it? It looks good on you. This is VOBS. In a world of audio, two men knew what they were doing, or at least they have you convinced. They put the BS in VOBS.TV. Having dinner tonight? How about having some VO too? Voiceover Body Shop. Have some voiceover with your dinner tonight on Voiceover Body Shop, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Every Monday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Voiceover Body Shop. I love when they talk BS about VO. Voiceover Body Shop. Learn the latest in voiceover technology. Learn how to get rid of that. All right, we're back. And you know, our oh, oh, we're on. Okay, cool. Uh, our guest tonight is Dan O'Day. He is a highly opinionated radio advertising guru and radio talent coach, waging war against bad commercials uh, and bad radio. Uh, Dan O'Day conducts seminars for radio stations, station groups, associations, and advertising agencies around the world. He also teaches voice talent on how to succeed in VO and audiobooks. And he's joining us right now from the other side of the hill. No, actually, he's in Northridge. <laughs> Welcome to Dan O'Day. He's in there somewhere. Hey, there he is. Hello. I always wanted to do that. I can't hear him, though. Oh, hello. You can't hear me? The Sony's turned off. Turn turn the Sony on there, uh, hat. Turn the what? Down no, there. it's not you, Dan. It's no, it's no. our studio. No, 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 no. Wanting to kill us and bury us six feet underground with every possible piece of might that it has. Yes. Yeah, so okay, we're, so we're Dan here. is 
Yeah. Ann is fine to blame me, and George is saying it's not my fault. Okay. And... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <sighs> we All got right. you, Dan. Go for it. Can we hear him now? How about now? There we go. Hey, guys. All right. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's an honor. Uh, uh, by the way, George, um, I, I was tempted uh, to jump in and you, know, you had a, one or two technical difficulties earlier, and I wanted to jump in and <laughs> All of it based on what I learned from radio station engineers uh, in my career. Please. And uh, I'll share it with you for next time, okay? Next time. Oh, we, a okay. teaser. Here a we teaser. go. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, so what's the problem? Well, we've solved all the problems here, but uh -huh. we, well, at least this, we've this tried. This is the engineer. This is the engineer. Okay. Uh -huh. Show me. Well, it should work. <laughs> <laughs> They go back to their trailers. So. <laughs> well, it should work. It, sh it should work. It's that's, supposed that's, to work. That's the, that's the answer. We, we, we gained a little slogan for over the last seven years of doing the show, and that is every week is Apollo 13. And uh, in the world of live webcasting, where it's the Wild West, gear, software updates, things are constantly changing. We mm -hmm. troubleshoot stuff pretty much every single show. So it's, a, well, it's fun. That, that's why I, I haven't changed from my Mac Plus. You know, that's all I use, and I know what to expect. <laughs> well, you know, Dan, I, I think it's fair to say you're a lot better known for, uh, you know, radio, uh, the radio world. Radio people know who you are than the voiceover people. Oh, sure. But how did you get into radio, and, and, and why did you get out? Although I can probably guess. <laughs> um, I had, there was no plan. I never had intended to get into radio. Um, I was 18 years old. I ran away from college, hitchhiked to Los Angeles. And one reason, I didn't know it at the time, but I think uh, that I could sense uh, some of the sinister presence uh, at the college that I was going to, because at the time, both John Landecker and John Leader were there. And I didn't know it at the time, but that, that was a good reason. So I hitchhiked to LA and... Um, it had some things I wanted. I wanted to write for a particular TV show, and that got canceled uh, the day before my interview. And I guess I got into it. The, the reason I do a lot of things, which is, I think there are two things. One is I must have been hearing jocks on the air and thinking, well, I can do better than that. <laughs> and and then I heard a commercial. It's uh, you know something along the lines of, say. Can you imagine how exciting it would be to get paid to do what I'm doing right now, which is talking to you about how exciting it would be to get paid for doing what I'm doing right now? <laughs> uh, sign up for the Bill Wade School of Radio and Television. And I, I did that uh, for no reason that I can think of. And in four months, they taught me how to cue a record. <laughs> uh, I think I, I'm a fast learner. I could have picked it up in two. Um, uh, on the other hand, to give them their due, my first radio job, I took out an ad in Broadcasting Magazine, uh, DJ Good Pipes Tight Board Will Relocate. And uh, I was convinced no one would offer me a job, so I took the first one that was offered across the country. And my very first day at that radio station, my very first job, the program director uh, gave me some reel-to-reel -reel stuff and said, here, I put these on cart and for anyone who doesn't know what a cart is, a tape cartridge, which is from a different century. And the, the Bill Wade School of Radio and Television taught me how to play carts. But not how to record them. They didn't teach me how to record them. <laughs> and I can only imagine how thrilled the program director was to discover that their new hire didn't know how to put something on cart. So that's how I got into it. I had set a few goals for myself, I think. Uh, in radio and I got lucky and uh, met the goals. And one day, the I've had some good station managers and some terrible station managers in my disc jockey years. And the last manager at the major market where I was working was just nuts. He was, he literally, uh, was nuts. I have a degree in psychology, so I can diagnose. <laughs> and I would find myself, you know, I'd be ridiculing him. You know, the jocks and everyone would be getting together and talking about what a what a moron he is, how stupid and crazy. And you know, we called it dial a format. Every every day we come into the station and there'd be a different format. 
And then one day I realized this guy who I was uh, mocking had a tremendous amount of power over my life. And I thought, oh, okay, what's wrong with that picture? And so that's when I stopped being in radio. Uh, I Basically, I finally decided if I have to work for an idiot, I must work for myself. So <laughs> ever since then, I've, I've been my own idiot. Yeah. That's, that's my radio story. Yeah. Well, you know, I remember going back, oh, some 38 years ago or so when I was a, a tyke in the radio business. Uh, I remember one of the jocks, the, uh, the morning jock at the show that I was at, at the station I was at, had the O-liners. So I was familiar with, with you all the way back then from, I guess what you did is you wrote the daily, the, the weekly jokes for, for, for morning jocks and stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, one of the reasons uh, let's, I became pretty successful on the radio, um, and I won some awards and stuff. And I decided like any disc jockey who has ever said anything that he thought was remotely funny. I said to myself, I wonder if uh, other people would pay me for this. And so I started uh, actually two different comedy services. The one that really took off more was O-Liners. And it was a monthly service. I wrote and published it. And uh, about once a month uh, at its peak, I think it was 950 subscribers around the world would get this eight-page newsletter style uh, mailing. And they'd go on the air and hopefully they would change the material around to uh, fit their own personalities. And that's, that was 15 years. So, yeah, I think I used it once or twice at one station I was at. I'm like, somebody had a copy. You know, and, and, sorry, and I bootlegged was, it. What were some of your favorite jokes from it? Oh, God, it was so long ago. <laughs> I, That's I, okay. I, you know, <laughs> probably had something to do with Gerald Ford or, or Jimmy Carter or something, but, uh, or Three Mile Island or one of those things. Three Mile Island was just ripe for comic. <laughs> it was. Uh, did you ever think about pursuing a career in just straight voiceover? For a split second, um, when I left radio, I moved back to Los Angeles and I took a class, a single class, a weekend class with someone I'm sure you know, Sue Blue, Susan Blue. And it was a lot of fun. And there was good news and bad news for me. One is I clearly was the best cold reader in the class. I mean, piece of copy, pretty, pretty good job. But I noticed that I didn't get better. You know, she would coach me, uh, try to tweak my performance, and I wasn't getting better. And that's not because she doesn't know how to coach. So that bothered me. And then when I found out that back in those days, uh, too, because, you know, as you know, everyone who's not in voiceovers, it sounds so cool and easy. Yeah, right. <laughs> and um, when I learned at that time that what – doing voiceovers full-time meant was spending all day long in your car, driving from audition to audition where you're not going to get most of them. That just didn't sound like fun at all. So I have no idea if I would have been good, but I never had the chance to find out. Hmm. Well, but you, did you become, you became a director though, and you started directing uh, commercials and you got to work with Gary Owens. Oh God. Yeah. Um, that's what's strange. Um, is moving to LA and getting a little bit older. And there were a few instances in which like my, my heroes, you know, our childhood became friends and uh, Gary was one of them. And I wrote and produced uh, two comedy albums for radio people called silly show sponsors. So it would be, they all began pretty much with this portion of the show is being brought to you by, I can, I can, this is not an example of a funny one, but it's the first one that comes to mind. Uh, this portion of the show is being brought to you by Anonymous Yogurt. Ask for it by name. <laughs> and, uh, so, so I hired Gary to twice to, to do the first volume and then the second volume. I wrote them all and, and I produced it. We recorded the first one in the secret recording studio at Radio and Records where John Leader was secretly making his voiceover demos. And I, I think that's the first time that's been made public. And the second time I booked a studio in Hollywood and it was very strange being behind the glass and wanting to give notes to Gary Owens because he was just so brilliant and 
he I would say he did 75 to 80 percent of the lines on one take. The on the occasion when I want to say something, it, you know, it felt weird. It's like, um, uh, Gary, uh, it's great. Um, I, I wonder if you know, would it be would it be okay? Would you you know? And he was really <laughs> cool about it. But what I learned from that was that if you really want to excel at comedy voiceover, you know, short these were short bits. You've got to have good peripheral vision. Because Gary, Gary didn't look at the script. He didn't have a copy of the script until the mic was on. And while Gary was reading the beginning of the joke, he also was skipping forward to the end of the joke. And that combined with a great comedy sense really paid off. And that's where I first realized, okay, if you've got a vision problem that really restricts your vision, uh, you're going to be a little bit handicapped compared to somebody who has really wide peripheral vision. That's right. That's what I learned from Gary. So Ga mm. Gary is a name that is in our world kind of a household name. But what's like one thing that when you say Gary Owens, everybody will not recognize that name? What's something that he's well, doing? if they're if they're old enough, and you know I'm not, but if if they are, uh, laughing, <laughs> laughing, laughing, yes. I mean, beautiful downtown Burbank. He was on camera on laughing, right? Yes, he was. Yeah, yeah. Although he he was hired as a writer, and one day in the uh, in the bathroom at the studios, George Slaughter was in there. And Gary was just kind of doing this, just to screw around with the echo and the reverb. And they, oh, and George said, "Oh, that's great. Well, let's let's make you the announcer." So, <laughs> uh, so after that, I guess uh, what uh, what's the card? I mean, that's, that's Roger why I, Ramjet was my favorite. Yeah, it, exactly, Roger Ramjet, and there, I think he was on Deputy Dog, which, believe it or not, I never saw. <laughs> so it depends on how old you are, um, what he represented to you, but. Sure. To me, represented somebody who always was really funny on television. And when I met him, I realized this guy is brilliant. I mean, you hear you hear his voice, which was amazing. And it's easy to think, who's the guy uh, on the Carol Burdett show? Lyle Wagner, you know, their their announcer. Yeah, I don't know the guy. Uh, I'm sure he's a great guy. So please, no, not putting it down, Lyle. Um, but Lyle Wagner was this really handsome guy who clearly his job was to stand there and look handsome and say, now we're back or something like that. And with Gary Owens, he, his voice was so rich that it was easy to assume that that's what made him appealing. But he was absolutely brilliant. Um, just he knew everybody. He knew you could name the topic. He would know something about it, a bit of trivia. And he was really, really fast. Yeah. As a matter of fact, um, I, it's funny. I have a lot of things in my head that I think are funny and that just like a radio, you never know until you share it. Um, one day I visited Gary at his office at KMPC Los Angeles. And I was doing the comedy service. And so he and I were just talking about the demands of creating material on a daily basis. And Gary said, well, you, well, you know, dad, that's an uncanny impression, isn't it? Like, <laughs> like being there. Um, well, you know, Dan, I get a lot of uh, inspiration for comedy by reading the letters to the editors, page, letters to the editor page of the LA times. And I said, in, in what I thought was a fairly witty repost, uh, I said, well, you know, I, I used to read the letters to the editor of the LA Times, but I had to stop because I just didn't have time to go kill every one of those people. <laughs> to which, without a moment's hesitation, Gary said, well, Dan, you'll just have to make time. <laughs> and he was just, he was brilliant. It was, it was really cool to work with him. Yeah. I, I'm oh, sure and that's the other thing. That's the other thing too. You get yeah. a phone call. Hello. Hello, Dan. Gary Owens. Yeah. I, I can tell. You really don't have to identify yourself. So. <laughs> I used to work with I used to work with Don LaFontaine. I was his tech and I would get that call, but Dan he never he never announced himself. He I guess he knew enough about himself to know that when he called, all he had to do was speak. You just say Schwarzenegger. He never say Dan was... George, this is Don. Yeah. He would just start talking. So Exactly. Well, you're not a voiceover coach. No, I'm not. Uh, but uh, you know, when when you have someone else voice projects for you, 
how do you get the performance out of them that you want? Uh, anyway, necessary. For, first of all, I only have people voice projects when I can't do it. Like it's very, very frustrating as a writer hearing it in my head, but I can't get it out of my mouth. And I, at those times I really get frustrated. So I hire somebody. Um, my first go-to is before they even do a take, I will fill them in on the emotional impact that I want this to have. Um, so it goes beyond, okay, we're talking to this type of person uh, in this type of life situation. And what you're about to say is something that she is terribly, terribly worried about. And she, do she doesn't know who she can talk to about it. And she's just terrified. And what you say is going to calm her down and reassure her or whatever it is. And that, that almost always worked. Uh, if that didn't work, then I would go to metaphor. Um, there was one, a number of years ago, Harlan Hogan and I, and you mentioned his microphone, by the way. There it is. And, uh, it's, it's amazing you guys still use that because I heard that it's no longer current. But um, <laughs> no, that's just for Harlan. You know. yeah. <laughs> he does listen. Old tomorrow. Uh, for the record, Harlan. Uh, microphone's great. Um, we we created a class a number of years ago, uh, I think 2009, called Starting Your VoiceOver Business. And I wrote the the script and sent it to Harlan to uh, record. And on his first take, it really wasn't what I had wanted. And so we got on the phone and, and I directed him. And the only thing I could think of to explain what I wanted was to say, okay, you're at the airport on a payphone. This is back when there was an occasional payphone. You're at the airport on a payphone at the gate. They're about to close the gate and your plane's going to leave. You got 10 seconds to get this message to me. And Harlan didn't say, got it, but he got it. He just, okay, that's, you know, whatever. If you're if you're directing someone, it's your job to do whatever it takes. Um, I when I can, it's probably my favorite thing. I, I teach an improv class for voice actors called Improvability. And first, let me say that for me, uh, improv for voiceover is not when you're at the audition coming up with some brilliant, clever th twist. It's the work you do beforehand that expands your range as a performer. And so for th that will be a public event. We'll have a whole bunch of people, people come up on stage. And so I'll give them commercial copy. You know, you're, you're a basic Mr. and Mrs. Stupid, you know, commercial. It's say, honey, why is the cat on the refrigerator? Well, dear, you know, um, <laughs> and they'll get up and, and uh, get behind the mic and do their best. And it'll sound as stupid as it was written, not their fault, but I'll, I'll go to one of them and I'll give them a backstory. I just give them a slip of paper. And uh, one of the things I find sneakily helpful is uh, either to the man or the woman, doesn't matter to, to one of the two, I'll give them a slip of paper that says you're terribly afraid your spouse is going to leave you <laughs> and you love her or him more than anything in the world. Okay, go. It changes. It changes the performance, not always for the better. Um, if you say, um, if you say you just heard on the radio that a tornado is coming and your entire neighborhood can be blown away in the next 45 minutes, that might inform your delivery. So that's, I'll try, I'll give people a backstory. And when I get the kind of performance I want, I'll say, great, exactly. Uh, and I'll pretend that I knew I was going to get that result from that backstory. <laughs> <laughs> if you're just joining us, boy, you've missed a lot already. Our guest is uh, Dan O'Day, who is a an, an a guy. It's kind of hard to describe what you do, but you you know you've been you've taught uh, radio stations how to how to improve their image and and all that kind of stuff. But you also teach uh, voiceover related classes. And if uh, anybody has a question for Dan. Throw it in the chat room right now, because Jack Daniel is sitting there typing away in the chat room, and uh, he'll relay that question to us, and we'll ask it of Dan. I, I can suggest one for you guys. Uh, okay, go for it. 
what the hell are you doing teaching anything about voiceovers? That would be a good question. Yeah. So what are you um, doing teaching anything about voiceovers? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, said, by the way, in the uh, the, the lovely uh, promotional write-up that, that you did for tonight's show and mentioned me, that I did not write, correct? No, I wrote it. <laughs> Um, Some of it. Thank you. It was very generous, overly generous. Uh, I have a hard time buying the legendary Dan O'Day. It's like, yeah, so those in radio, of, Dan, you are a legend. Everybody no, knows who you I'm are. I'm really I'm serious. It's like over the years, if someone's been around long enough, like to be called a veteran, now they're not called a veteran. They're called legendary. You know, the, the legendary Jamie Farr. You know, and it's legendary is not the same as been around a while, but, um, but thank you for the, for the nice words. And you started to ask a question, I think, and I wasn't listening. Oh, oh yeah. Well, it, it had to do with voiceover, but you know, ask for it. yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, how did you begin teaching voiceover classes? If really you were, you were really an expert on radio commercials more than anything else. Um, twofold. One was in 1996, a gentleman by the name of Dick Orkin and I created something called the International Radio Creative and Voiceover Summit. That was an annual event for those people. And the idea was Dick would do the voiceover stuff and I would do the radio stuff. Although Dick, of course, had a great radio background. And that's pretty much what we stuck to, except there, were, there would be times when I would notice something about the performance and I would discover I actually had something to say. Um, when Dick and I would do our we call it our critique of Spotathon, in which we critique uh, commercials submitted by attendees. And I was surprised to discover that not only was I able to uh, make comments about the story of the spot, the script, and which I figured I should, you know, I'm, I'm a writer, but there were times when I would be able to pinpoint stuff about the performance. Ne and it was never technical stuff. You know, I, I never did, still don't have the ability to say, well, you know, if you work the mic just uh, an eighth of an inch closer, and if you, uh, you know, drop uh, your gain by three tenths of well, whatever, I can't do that. You know, and, and I know people, and, and George is one of them, I, 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 a couple of people, they can just hear a recording and they can say, okay, here's the problem. You know, this is what you're doing, and uh, you got to fix. I can't do that. <laughs> that's uh, what we do. Yeah, no, exactly. And that—that's really I can't do that. So it's never technical, but it, it would be performance based. So that's how I got into. It's, I think teaching maybe more than uh, than coaching. And in 2009, Harlan Hogan and I uh, launched a class called Starting Your Voiceover Business, and that's really where. If I started a little to become a little bit known to be a uh, VO people, and we did that again, the same reason I do almost everything. Um, e I do almost everything I do either because I want to see if I can do it or because I'm really annoyed at something. And Harlan and I would get very upset about the uh, let me see, how, how can I say this politely? The bottom feeders of the uh, voiceover industry who run ads saying, how would you like to make money at home in your underwear? It's easy. And, you know, you sign up, you go to the weekend thing, and then they sell you the $3,000, you know, advanced thing, and it's all a bunch of crap. And that really, there was one person in particular whom I won't name, but who was doing a lot of advertising for that. And this was someone who could not get work, could not get an agent, nothing. And finally, we, we said, let's, let's do a class, but it's not how to get into voiceover. It's for people who already are in voiceover, either part-time, full-time, successfully, unsuccessfully. If you're already in voiceover, we're going to help you get as far as you can faster. Right. So we don't know what your ceiling is of performance, but we can help get you there faster. And that's how we jumped into that. Right. Well, you teach marketing essentially to voice actors because that's really what we have to do. What, well, what is your definition of marketing when it comes to, to voiceover? Marketing is, I think not just voiceover to me, marketing is simply having the solution to someone's problem 
and making sure that your solution is right in front of them at the very moment they're looking for a solution. That, that's what it is to me. It's not a being a huckster. It's not spamming the world. Um, there's a, a gr seems to be a great misunderstanding as to what marketing is among a lot of people in our industry. Uh, well, they never studied yeah. it. <laughs> they just hear the word. It's <laughs> it, uh, what passes for marketing for, it's not just voiceover, uh, but what we see a lot of, and uh, Harlan is on a lot more mailing lists than I am, even though neither of us joined the list. So we're getting spammed. And almost every day, Harlan will forward stuff to me. And it's people who think they're doing marketing and it'll be their newsletter. And what these people don't understand is nobody cares about them. I mean, that's bottom line, nobody cares. And if you're going to send out what you call a newsletter, that's all about you. And there, there's the one guy who said in his email newsletter said, let's, let's call him Bob Smith. Okay. It was, uh, in other work Bob Smith has done recently, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. I think, who the hell do you think cares? It's like, I know, and I then know. You have somebody else who mails out tips about enjoying the holiday because, you know, I know with you guys, when you go to your computer, check your email, you're hoping to find something to read, right? Because you're bored. And so you're looking for extraneous stuff. And that's not marketing. That's just being dumb. Um, but a lot of people fall into the trap of doing what is efficient rather than what is effective. So in terms of efficient, like how much work goes into it? Well, send an email. That's nothing. Does it work? No. Um, do, you, do you guys get, are, are you, without naming names, are, do you get uh, spam from any voice actors? Spam? Well, we get blogs. Well, yeah, what, I, I mean, what I mean is emails from people who you did not opt into their list. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Talking I, about their business. And I know my girlfriend, Maxine, who's a voice actor, that's one of her pet peeves. I mean, we talk about that. Getting opted in on lists just because you happen to be also a fellow voice actor. So I guess that's not being be on the list. In, that's being co-opted. Yes. Um, so, but, but think about this. Who do the voice actors send that unsolicited email to trying uh, to get work? Other, other voice actors? <laughs> Does that make sense? No. <laughs> I mean, so for me, um, really good marketing Somebody's doing a, a voice actor doing really good marketing. I should never see it. You should never see it. Only the people who are likely to hire them should see it. And they should have requested it. It shouldn't be spam. So there are people doing really excellent marketing, but we don't see it because they know what they're doing. They're doing it right. Mm. Good point. Again, we're talking with Dan O'Day. We're talking about you know, marketing your voiceover business and some fun stuff from radio. And if you've got a question for him, Again, throw it in the chat room. Jack Daniel will be really lay, relaying that to us. Uh, now, Wait, can, one I, of, can, I, can I answer one of them right now? One of them? One of the questions. <clears throat> okay, if you want to. Uh, I'm, I'm getting the vibe. Wait, I'm, not, I'm getting the vibe. <clears throat> got it. Okay. We got one from... Wait, from, wait, no. Wait, I got it here, mentally. Okay. Here's the answer. Sure, we'll get that on for you as soon as we can. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. As a production director, I totally respect that one. Here's a matchbook. Give me something in 30, 30 minutes. You know, it's got to sound great for the client. Um, did you have, did you, in the, in your production room, were you the person that people at the station went to when they needed aspirin? Uh, no. Okay. I would usually throw it at him if I had it though. Okay. Of all the, all the years that I spent in radio, there's only one person who is in the sales department who I would still consider somebody I would want to talk to. Yeah. Of course, he ended up as a station manager, so I always wanted to talk to I, him. I get to work <laughs> under the uh, the uh, programming director who ended up being hired by Howard Stern. It's serious. And I think he believe I believe he's still there, actually. I'm not sure, but. Um, he got hired by Howard to do. Become the sure. programming director for his serious station. Oh, for his channel. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but, and Howard knows what he's doing. He, he seems to have, <laughs> he seems to have staying power. 
I mean, yeah. he's been on the air for a long time, that guy. Yeah. yeah. Howard is unique. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one of the things that you, that you've been starting to teach is stuff with audiobooks. And begin, oh, yeah. beginning of this year, you started an ACX master class, but you took some flack for some people from it. What was that yeah, all about? That actually, that actually was, uh, in 2013, uh, David H. Lawrence, the 17th, uh, and I had lunch. David, for those of you who know him, he's a sponsor of yours. Mm -hmm. I saw, um, uh, David was my first webmaster many, many years ago. He called me from across the country and said, you know, you should have your own website. And I said, what's that? And, uh, you know, I took it from there. And David and I had lunch at a hamburger joint, not far from me. And he started to tell me about ACX. And again, this is 2013. And at f it took me a while to understand this was not another pay to play site. Cause I kept saying, okay, so what monthly dues, what? So they take a big hunk of no. They charge you to audit no. Oh, you paid for a higher team? No. And when I finally understood what it was, I said something like, "I must be the most ignorant guy in the business because what you're describing is so great. Every voice actor must know about this." And he said, "Not really. It's pretty new." And uh, so we talked about it, and we decided to develop a class for it. And for those of you who don't know David or you don't know uh, his audiobook credits, you know, David has uh, uh, voiced about 160, 170 audiobooks. He's been in a long time. And he's, he's very, he's very prolific, good at it. yeah. And so we uh, carefully designed this class that we called the ACX Master Class. And we announced it. You know, I think we, we had some videos to introduce it. And one morning I checked my email and there were three different emails from individuals, uh, fans or customers of mine that essentially said, Dan, there is a Facebook group devoted to audiobooks that, and they're just ripping you apart. They're attacking you right and left. You're a charlatan. You're a con man. You know, understand there's no way that, they could critique the class because nobody had ever experienced it. And, and all three people said, you got to go over there, see what, see what they're saying. And I actually did what, what's called a cost benefits analysis. I thought, okay, if I go there and see what these bad things are being said about me, what are the odds that's going to improve my day? You know, that I'm going to, I'm going to feel better. And so I didn't, I, I, to this day, I haven't seen what they said. I am told, and you got one or both of you guys probably is in the group. I am told that um, some, by somebody in the group that it had the longest thread attacking us, like 400 you know, comments attacking us. And uh, it was interesting. Yeah. Uh, and, da and David was kind of shocked because he had never been attacked before. Um, I've been doing things kind of publicly for a long time and you learn that whether or not you deserve it, whatever you do, if it's, if it reaches a point where it's visible, uh, some people w will attack you for it. So. Yeah. Unfortunately, pitchforks work on the internet too. So oh, yeah. you get an yeah, angry that's... mob flaming yeah. and trolling. Yeah. It just takes it on a life feeds, of its own. It takes on a life of its own. And if, if, if somebody who had taken our class, were to post something negative about it, it would probably would hurt my feelings, but I would think, well, you got every right, you know, you, you were there. Right. Yeah. But these people were attacking stuff that they, they didn't know about. And they were saying, Oh, they were saying wrong stuff. We got this one guy. Uh, of course I don't hold a grudge, uh, but I can tell you his name. Uh, there's one guy who, posted a big warning uh, on my blog saying, if you're a sag after member, watch out, you can get thrown out of the union, uh, for, which is not true. Mm -hmm. But when I saw that, I freaked out thinking, oh my God, I got it wrong. I thought I'd researched it. I called sag after I got the guy, one of the two guys, uh, I got the guy who negotiated the contract uh, with Audible and ACX. And I said, can, can you get thrown out of the, no. Okay. And I asked, asked him maybe 10 different ways, you know, okay. Is it possible if you record a book that is in a certain category, you can get in trouble with the, with the union? No. He just kept asking and, at, and finally said, Dan, 
If you're a union member, you can record any title that's offered on ACX, period. And what amazes me about that story is that guy has, to this day, has not apologized, has not said, sorry for scaring away all those people. It's just, it's real easy to attack somebody. And um, uh, there's no there's no moral there other than, then I have a long memory. <laughs> yeah, and, and there was some. There was somebody else um, who said that uh, how awful the editing was. That when she started, it took her ten hours per per finished hour. Now, yeah. ACX says it should be five or six. Actually, you can get it and, down to three to one. Actually, if you you're, yeah, no, you're that, good exactly. At it. And David Lawrence invented a, a method of editing for audiobooks where our students typically get two to three hours. You know, a couple of them are like 90 minutes per finished hour. So not only was she slower than people in her class, she was slower than ACX says beginners should be. And a year later, I noticed she's teaching audiobook classes. <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah. What else would you expect? <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's not, that's, you know, and we hear that all the time. Now, one of the things you, you know, we have one more question for you, and then we're going to take a break, and then we're going to get okay. some questions from our audience, but. Last year, now you were, you were teaching the ACX class, the master class this year. Last year, you premiered a new online class called Aikido Self-Promotion for Audiobook Narrators. What mm -hmm. is Aikido Self-Promotion, and what led you to create a class like this? Turning resistance into assistance somehow? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, uh, first of all, I, I, for a long time, wanted to use a Japanese word. Uh, <laughs> of course. And as you you just explained, Aikido is uh, a, a, a method of self-defense in which you use all the energy from your opponent. You, you, there, are, there, is no, there are no attack moves in Aikido. It's totally, if, if someone lunges at you, it's being able to move in a way where the person gets carried forward by their own momentum. Mm -hmm. And it was, I, I had added that name, uh, that word to the title just before I released the class, because I realized in my mind, at least it fit. It's, it's very different from the model that most voice actors have and certainly most um, audiobook narrators, if, if you're an ACX, which, which I like. I like ACX. And by the way, um, the, the PS to the, or the coda to the story about those people who attacked us that first year, we now have at last count more than 2,000 audiobooks that our students have produced that are selling on Audible. So, but, but still, that system is where you try to get clients. There's nothing wrong with that. But I've always found it much more enjoyable when people come to you. It's a, it's a very, very different dynamic. Uh, to, uh, on the one hand, would you please hire me to somebody coming to you and saying, could, could you possibly consider recording my audio book? <laughs> the difference between those. Mm, yeah. I mean, it, it, re it, it really is. And when you've positioned yourself that way, Price goes out the window. You know, they, they it, when they have learned you are the one person who can do it, and it might be the one person in their uh, neighborhood, in their town, in their state, in the country, whatever, but the one person that they know of who does this, you're in charge. And so I created this uh, class for that. And it was, it was kind of like a radio show in which you spend a lot of time writing and producing and then you put it on the air and see if anybody responds and fortunately people liked it and it worked and uh so we're doing it again but right. that's the whole idea about key though is having them come to you there's there is zero saying could i or well you know i'd be glad to or why don't you take my card none of that it's a process whereby people come to you and say would you please makes total sense once again, our guest is Dan O'Day, and we're going to answer your questions right after these messages. So stay tuned. Skittles, taste the rainbow. She has fought for those who don't have a voice. The National Zoo. <laughs> because sometimes you just need to stroke a llama. Instagram. Download it and start embarrassing your teenagers today. Resolve spot and stay. Because the dog's gonna drag his butt on the carpet. He just is. $400 million. 
That's what the mayor wants you to pay for a new basketball stadium. Chickens were made to be fried. Sorry, buddy. KFC. Engage the droid army with this Lego Star Wars Republic fighter tank. <laughs> what? You've never seen a girl kill a troll? GameStop. Hey, I'm the cat meme guy. Come on, you know you love cat memes. Instagram, what's your thing? Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. $50 when you buy VoiceOver Essentials Spring Bundle. The renowned VO1A microphone, specifically designed for VoiceOver. A MicPort Pro the Audio Pro's first choice and the best and easiest to use USB analog digital converter and preamp and are their own Vox Pop Stop, all metal pop filter. All this with Amazon free to business day shipping in the continental United States. Virtually all microphones are designed for musicians and singers and woodworkers. Not word workers. <laughs> yeah. So with the help of... It, it's, oh, it's word workers, yeah. So with the help of MXL, Harlan designed a microphone specifically for voiceover, the VO1A. It gets rave reviews for its sound and affordable price. Free two-day shipping in the U.S. The microphone stand's not included when you go to the, the website. The metal pop filters last forever and are easy to clean and direct those plosive sounds downward away from your microphone, and it saves your microphone from moisture or, you know, spit getting its sensitive diaphragm eventually degrading its sound. Free two-day shipping in the U.S. For clear, clean, pristine sound in an amazingly small package, it's the impossible to beat mic port, the preamp, and the audio uh, analog digital audio interface turns any microphone into a USB mic with studio-quality audio, not the consumer sound so often heard on all-in-one USB microphones. Get all three, all three, and save $50. But separately, they'd be $518.94. But the bundle price is $468.94. Go right now to voiceoveressentials.com. Right there at the bottom of the page. Just go down there, click on it, and... Oh, wait. No, that's a different spot. I'm sorry. Go all the way down, <laughs> click on the picture of Harlan, go over to Voiceover Essentials, and get this great package on those three great items. The VO1A, the Pop Stopper, and... What was the other one? The MicPort Pro. All for not very much. Thanks, Harlan, for being a sponsor for seven years. 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on VOBS.us. You're watching VOBS.tv. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Yep, this is V. Wow. Or if it's everybody. Well, we're, uh, but, we're on the break and they're playing some playback. Sometimes no, I, I, I am an experienced lip reader, so I can see that George is saying, Dan, you're the best guest we've ever had. Don't worry about it. You've already given us so much value. But really, I'd like to be able to hear you. Um, Are you hearing us uh, right now? I'm going to put, well, first of all, if anybody is hearing me, can you tell them in the chat box? Yeah, we're hearing Dan and the problem is on his end. Yeah. We can Are hear you. saying you. Yes. Yes. We hear you. Okay. Can you hear us? Yeah, so apparently w w the virus traveled from your uh, computer to mine. Um, I have done the, I, I didn't touch anything. I was just sitting here enraptured, you know, by Dan's uh, delivery of the commercial and halfway through disappeared. So I've oh, tried nice. muting, yeah. unmuting. Um, uh, I yeah. see that my, my the level is reading on my microphone. No, no, no. Here, let me what, mute it. Dan hears us no matter what they hear on the air because it's a separate system. And now right? I've unmuted it. Um, so Dan, can, I'm not hearing us. We can a hear Dan. Thing. He's just not getting us. Yeah, and I don't know why. Let's see if I can. You, you know what? We do have turn on my volume on Facebook. One minute. Oh, there I am. Oh yeah, we're going Isn't on the air. It's just strange. Dan so uh, I just went to Facebook, uh, and I can hear it there. But I'm not hearing Check it. Check Dan. One, two, three. Yep. There we go. Okay. Under All right. That. So, Dan, I just reset the audio input in the Zoom, and now you can hear us. So, let Great. Me, let me share the screen again so you can see us. And off we go. Can you Great. hear us now? 
Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, sorry for the interruption. That's okay. No, great vamping there, is by the way. Is it sunspots, Mercury retrograde, <laughs> or is somebody conspiring to take us off the air? Because it's been one of those days. It's all three for the price of one. Oh, my goodness. This, this is what I get, guys. Um, when I, I have computer problems that are impossible. And, you know, my first computer was the uh, Mac Plus, which I have over on my uh, filing cabinet. And I've lost track of the number of times I've taken, had some problem and taken it to the techie and they'll say, sir, I'm sorry. Uh, what you're describing isn't possible. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then after about half an hour of troubleshooting, they'll say, geez, I've never seen this yep. before. Yeah. <laughs> and that doesn't make me feel special. What I want to yeah. hear is, oh yeah, I've seen it a thousand times. Here's what you do. Yeah, so that, who knows what just happened, but that happens to us. All the time. Tonight's been one of those kind of <laughs> nights. Yeah, it really has. I got to tell you, it has. But we do have a bunch of questions stacked up for you, and we want to oh, really? get those going. Yeah, we have a lot of them. Let's start off right off the top here with one from Robert Laborde, and he says, "What style of voiceover read is most popular for radio commercials, and what is the future of terrestrial radio?" So, I guess he's asking a style question about radio commercials. Yeah. Do you see? That there's he, he's one asking style? two questions. One of it's which two I'm not questions. qualified to answer. The, the first one, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not qualified to answer. You guys would have a much better informed opinion than I in terms of the, sty the preferred style of uh, radio commercials. Uh, the future of terrestrial radio, uh, sadly, is it simply will become more and more commoditized. Um, meaning, you know, when something's a commodity, people buy the cheapest. That's it. And so when one company owns nine stations in a market and you know one for each format and they've got virtually a monopoly and they might have a competitor but you know the the corporate owner can say well if you buy our country station we'll also throw in our all news our hot talk our rap station our gold station etc 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 and that becomes hard to beat and so people do compete on price and it's I was about to say it's sad, but it's also that's also that's the way business works. Uh, radio became a mature industry in America, you know, fifteen twenty about twenty years ago, and that's what happens when an industry becomes mature, then it becomes commoditized, and and then you get a lot of people complaining on Facebook about how in the good old days it used to be like, well, it's not that way anymore. Yeah, sounds like yeah. you spend a lot of time on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh <laughs> Well, I do. I've, I've got 12 friends. I mean, <laughs> well, that's going to keep like, take up all your time. Yeah. Uh, Jack Daniel asks, how would you differentiate the radio read f on copy for a TV, uh, from a TV read? That one I only know because I learned it from someone else. Uh, so I, I don't want to be taking credit. You know, ba basically, what I, what I learned from someone else, because I never thought about uh, TV spots, is that with a TV spot, you are commenting on the actual story that's being presented on the screen. Whereas in a radio spot, you, you are the story, your words are carrying the story. Uh, but beyond that, you know, I know a little about it, but it all comes from, from one person and I don't want to be ripping them off. <laughs> well, you can, you can put them in the footnotes if you want. And... I could. And the fact that I'm not maybe implies there's some drama. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Moving along. Yes. Uh, this one comes in from John C., who's in our chat room. Uh, what are some of the things from radio that have held on too long in terms of style or format that you wish would just go away and die <laughs> off? I'm sure you have plenty. Uh, I'm, I have long been a big fan, you know, when I work with radio stations, of uh, I'll tell them, uh, let's get your program log out. And I want you to defend every item on that log. And by that, I mean, just tell me why it's there. And if they've got a reason, I'm cool with it. But you would be shocked at how many times the answer is, well, it's always, it's always been there. You know, and so the, the first thing is a, a lot of stuff that's done for no particular reason. If a lot of stuff that, I mean, that is done so they can say they did it, but that, that nobody cared, I mean, now there's no longer a, a news and public affairs a, a commitment uh, for U.S. radio stations. But hmm. still, there are some stations that will do what they call news or they'll put a public affairs program on Sunday morning when 
the biggest audiences available. And um, when they do the news, it's somebody for one minute reading uh, wire service copy that they don't understand. And so I'd rather get if you're get rid of it. Don't do it if you're not going to do it so that it's worth the listener's time. You know, to me, that's the ultimate test. Is this worth the listener's time and attention? And if it's not, why are you doing it? If you have to do it, then what can you do to be doing it so it's worthwhile? And that applies just about everything. And certainly uh, some of the folks here have uh, heard me rant and rave about you know, radio, radio commercials that are written by the salespeople who basically they, they take a fact sheet you know, or a brochure from the advertiser and put it into 30 seconds or 60 seconds. And so it's, you know, Blauman's has been uh, serving the Tri-City area for 57 years with over 19, 1,900 years of experience combined and their family <laughs> owned and operated. And here's a bunch of other stuff. And we set everything in the brochure. And here's our website, our phone number, and our street address. And we're done. Well, it makes the advertiser happy until the advertiser realizes they're not getting any money for their <laughs> you know, return and they stop. And what I, I've always wished for this and now more than ever is more people in radio who take their, their responsibility to their clients seriously, because you've got a, a business owner coming to you. If you're an account exec, let's say, or you're the, you're the producer on the spot. And the business owner comes to you because you're the expert. And you're saying, yeah, not only will we air your spot, but we'll write it, we'll produce it, and we're not going to charge you anything for it. So guess how, how much they value that, by the way, because you right. don't charge anything. And they're coming to you as the expert, and you're saying to them, trust me, give me your money, and we're going to help you achieve your goals. And sadly, I don't think enough people take that responsibility seriously. You know, if, if, if you ask me to do something, uh, if you ask me to do anything uh, professionally and I don't feel I can do a good job, I'll say, no, thank you. You know, it's, that's, that's what I think people need to do. Um, beyond that, uh, I, you know, um, yeah, I should say some really funny things that uh, aren't going to make much sense. Give, give people a reason to listen. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the biggest thing. In my lifetime, radio programmers have almost without exception believed that the way to win in the ratings is to make fewer mistakes than the competition. Uh, you know, like you have an, uh, an, air, uh, uh, an air check session and the PD says, oh, there's some dead air over there. Oh, thank you. The, the disc jockey didn't know how to recognize dead air. Um, but you don't win by removing negatives. You win by giving people a reason to listen. And the, the radio attitude of winning by removing negatives is like opening a brand new radio, uh, restaurant in town and putting up a big billboard that says, we don't serve any of these foods. It's not it. <laughs> well, wait, why? <laughs> you know, because you mentioned Howard Stern. Uh, Howard... Uh, Howard does a lot of things that are not correctly done, um, you know, by the book. There will be some dead air. There, there are all kinds of things. But Howard's content is so compelling to his audience that they don't care. And, and that, to me, is certainly what a radio personality uh, is. And it's also, for your music station, a, music, uh, a successful music station is one that, after you've played a huge hit song, your audience stays with you because every song you play is somebody's favorite song, which is good news and bad news. That means if your music is well programmed right now, you're playing somebody's favorite song. Great. The bad news is you're playing somebody's favorite song. And as soon as it's over, why should they keep listening to you? The one, the one thing they know is they're not going to hear that song next. So what does the music station do to, give people a reason to keep listening. And, and it, here in LA, this goes back, I guess, to the 90s. If you remember K-Rock, uh, when John Frost uh, was their imaging director, there are a heck of a lot of people in Los Angeles 
who would say, you know, I, yeah, I listen to K Rock, not so much really for the music or, or anything, but I just for those funny little bits between the records. And that was John. And it wasn't, you know, using the call letters 12 times or <laughs> getting as many sponsor mentions. And it was John giving people re a reason to listen. So yeah. that's why I like to see people to give people a reason to listen. Okay. We got one more question for you. Okay. From uh, Fred North. He says, Dan, you're the ultimate of the gig economy world. Have you woven to, how have you woven together all these things you do into a career? So a gig economy, I'm guessing what that means. Um, it helps to be psychologically incapable of working for other people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. sounds, sounds like people in radio. Yeah. No, it's very, it's very much me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, there is something in psychology called polarity response and all of us have it to a certain degree, but I have it to uh, what some people would say is an, an unhealthy degree. And that is a polarity, polarity response is if, 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 if you have excessive polarity response and I say, Hey, uh, when we go on the air, make sure you don't mention the weather. First thing you're going to do is mention the weather. And so the, the best way to get me, uh, not to do something is to tell me uh, the best way to get me to do it is to ask if I mind, you know, is, if it's okay with you. So I'm not cut out to work uh, for other people, but to answer your question more directly for, to whatever degree I've woven a career out of this. Um, I, I see my career as doing projects. I do things that interest me that uh, either aren't being done and I think should be done or that I think aren't being done as well as they could, or that just seemed like they'd be fun. And I want to see if I could do it and I'll just go ahead and do it. And that's not much of a, a plan for anyone, you know, Fred, I don't know how that can help anyone. If there's anything to glean from that, it's, I think one advantage I have over some people is I'm not afraid to fail. Yeah. You know, uh, like, you know, coming here, talking to you guys, you know, maybe, uh, maybe I would do, maybe I'm doing a lousy job. You know, maybe afterwards you guys are gonna say, Oh man, can you believe it? He's just as bad as we, we were afraid he would be, <laughs> but it, it, nobody dies, you know? And so for anyone who is looking to do something professionally or, or otherwise, don't let fear stop you. The absolute worst thing that happened that can happen is it doesn't succeed. And pretty much only you and two people know about it. Nobody else cares about you. So, you know, I've, I've had some successes that you brought up and I probably have had some failures that you don't know about. Yeah, well, I, you I, did think, I think it's you a big problem for a lot yeah, of well, us. You, you did mention Chernobyl and, and <laughs> you know, but aside from that, most people don't know about my big flops. So I, I, I think a lot of us were very egocentric and we think that people pay attention to everything that we do and everything that we do wrong and that they all are care about what it is that we are doing and doing wrong and and we get obsessed about it and at the end of the day no Absolutely. people aren't pay, paying attention to you they're paying attention to themselves more than you so um, you know keep yeah, my, my my epiphany came uh, when i was in junior high school which uh, i missed the meeting where they changed it to uh, middle school but it was junior high school i was 12 or 13 and i truly remember this lying in bed at night um, obsessing about whatever I had done that day in school that was embarrassing and not wanting to go to school the next day because I knew that's all people were going to talk about. Now, as soon as they saw me, they were going to ridicule me. And like, I literally remember this thinking, wait a second, I don't spend any time thinking about the dumb things other people did. I'll bet they're not thinking about me. And that was the freeing moment. Um, yeah, for me at least. So yeah. whatever, whatever it is you, you know, Fred or anybody else out there, if there's something you want to do, then do, do it. it. You know, the work, the absolute worst that happens is it won't succeed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Dan, if somebody wants to get a hold of you and maybe take one of your classes, where can they go to find all the information about this plethora of courses you have? Uh, well, let's see. Um, uh, Actually, if you go to danoday.com, D-A-N-O-D-A-Y.com slash free hyphen stuff, you'll get, find a bunch of free stuff. Um, we, we've got the uh, Kido class coming up later this year. If you're interested 
Uh, if you're an audiobook narrator who has recorded at least one audiobook already and is on ACX, uh, and you'd like to be on our uh, alert list, please send me an email and you could send it to promo, P R O M O, at danoday.com. And you know, let us know who you are and stuff uh, so we know who we're communicating with. But otherwise, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm fairly easy to find, uh, danoday.com. Or I'm somewhere. You mentioned Facebook, and I'm <laughs> you'll find him there. <laughs> can, can I tell you the one? I'll, I'll end with this. Uh, I I got on Facebook fairly early, due to some you know a friend of mine was a big expert in it, and I was so proud the day I got onto Facebook and I told my 13 year old daughter at the time, I said, "Hey, I'm on Facebook now," and. You know, I was expecting some plaudits, you know, like how cool I am. And she immediately said, don't friend me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got that one too. Dan O'Day, thank you so much for joining us tonight and imparting all this wisdom and a lot of golden nuggets in there that I think people will, will glean from this. And uh, we look forward to talking to you again. It, it's always a pleasure, guys. Uh, thank you for uh, having me. It's been an honor. And um, anytime you need technical help, uh, you know, George, I'm, I'm right here. Okay. I got you on speed dial. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Great. No, uh, thanks so much guys. I, I it's an, an honor to be on the show. All righty. All right. Well, George and I'll be right back to wrap things up into a nice tight little ball right after this. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, cast home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. And we're back. We are back to say goodbye. Hello, I must be going. I'm glad to say I came to stay. I don't know, whatever, however that goes. Anyway, um, first off, our greetings to Pat Sweeney, who I hear is actually doing better. Oh, that's good to know. He's eating and all that stuff. And so, Ooh. Pat, we love you. Keep keep on keeping on. Who's on next week, March 26th, Dr. Rene Gupta. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, Rena Gupta, I'm sorry. Dr. Rena Gupta Rina, from yeah. Osborne mm -hmm. Head and Neck. She, she specializes in us voice guys. That's right. So that'll be really interesting. April 2nd, we taking a break. Yay. Because we need We one. need it. Bad. We've done like 10 weeks in a row or something. Woo. Uh, April 9th, Tim Friedlander from uh, Soundbox LA will be here. April 16th, Scott Brick will be here. Far out. Talking about audiobooks. Scott, he loves us and we love him. And it's always great when he he's here. Stuff. Uh, April 23rd, a mystery guest. <laughs> Ooh. I don't know. Uh, April 30th, Kristen Lennox and, uh, and daughter oh, cool. or daughters. I'm not quite sure. We have a, a mother, daughter, a parent, child, yeah. uh, guest. That's yeah. fun. And on May 21st, Harry Dunn promos at the CW. So Whoa. planning ahead. But we're, it's, our great producer, Catherine Curden has booked us ahead two months here. Some great stuff coming up, but boy, I'm looking forward to taking a week off. Me too. Me too. Uh, who are our donors of the week? Oh, we've got Jorge Infante. Thank you, Jorge. I love that Jorge, name. Jorge, it's, it's his studio. <laughs> Andrew Kaufman, uh, Eric Aragoni, still donating pretty much every single episode, or he'd probably say every episode. Every episode, yeah. Um, Philip Sapir, uh, more names, more names. We've got our subscribing donor from Sarah Borges. Thank you, Sarah. Going back a little bit longer, Antland Productions, our Uncle, buddy Uncle Roy. Roy, and Tracy H. Reynolds. Thank you for helping keep the show afloat. We're going to put that money to good use pretty soon here. Uh, the computer <laughs> studio needs a lot of TLC, and we're going to get on that and try to get things running better, not only for us, but for our 
technical director, Susan, who has to deal with the yeah. studio. When we have, we have to clean up her hair at the end of the show here. It's <laughs> yeah. strewn about here. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. You've got a new podcast for do. geeky stuff. Yeah, it's very geeky. We there. talk about mics and gear and the history of tube microphones and all this kind of fun stuff mm-hmm. on, on the Pro Audio Suite. Uh, it's a We've got a few of us on the show, a couple Aussies, Andrew Peters, uh, and Darren Robertson, and then Source Elements uh, co-founder Robert Marshall, who's on the show with me as well. So Boy, that four is of a us room full of geeks for tech. sure. Uh, we have our own podcast, of course. Maybe you're watching it live tonight, or if you watch the replay. But if say you're driving in your car, we do it as a podcast as well. So everything, right. all that great stuff that Dan O'Day said tonight, you can hear it all over again. Yes. And take your time and fast forward and go backwards and hear it again. Maybe you're listening to the podcast and you'd like to actually be here in person or watch it live at six o'clock every Monday night, unless we're not, but almost every Monday night, we're here at the studio, 6 p.m. Pacific time. If you want to be here live in the studio, send us an email to the guys at vobs.tv. Say you want to be in the audience and we'll pull up a sofa cushion for you. Yeah. It's a nice sofa and maybe a dog will sit on your lap or something. <laughs> yeah, I hope you like yeah. dogs. Uh, thanks to Jorge Infante for letting us use his studio tonight in Portugal. Uh, and uh, if you want to have your booth, show us your booths. Send it to uh, the guys at VOBS.TV. And uh, so it looks like we're in your studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. We need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. It's VoiceOver Extra. Uh, source elements, VO to go, go voice actor websites.com and J. Michael Collins demos for providing an uninterrupted live stream and bandwidth. All right. Well, we'd like to thank Marcy for being patient with us and letting us be out here in the garage while she's making dinner. Uh, Catherine Curd and our producer for finding great guests like Dan O'Day and, uh, Jack Daniel for chat room duty tonight and our floor producer, technical director, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Boy, tolerant, to- very being. tolerant floor director, Susan Merlino, Jack DeGoli for the show notes, and Lee Penny. Please come visit us simply for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight. You know, this is not an easy business, which is why we bring you experts like Dan O'Day and all the other great people here to show you that anything's possible, but you got to do it yourself. Tell your friend who says, hey, I hear I have a good voice for voiceover. Where should I go to learn about the business? Tell them to come here. You'll find it here. That's going to do it for us this week. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VOBS. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next Monday night.